show you four things that we do that is called repentance. Before I show you how repentance is prosecuted. The first thing we do that is not repentance is mere conviction and not turning back to God. As beautiful as conviction is, if we don't turn to the Lord, it's not repentance. You can be convicted of masturbation, you can be convicted of immorality, and you cry. When you finish crying, you say you have repented. And then next week you go back, you didn't repent. What happened to you is a biochemical process. That's why if your relative die, when you finish crying, you feel better. You just cried and felt better. You didn't repent. Acts 24, 24 to 25. I want to show you a few things. Because I want to teach you. See, there are things that we need to learn consciously. He said, now this was Paul brought in chains before Governor Felix. And when Paul preached... Felix was so convicted that he was terrified. But Felix didn't change. Rather, Felix was looking for an opportunity to be bribed. That's what happens to many people. When they come to church and you talk about sin, they weep, they weep, they weep. After they are done weeping, they now feel better. Or they go and fornicate, meet a lady and fornicate today, they come back home, they start looking for a man of God. I see it a lot. They call you and say they want to kill themselves now. They want to die. They, are, they, are, they want you to tell them, don't worry. The Lord has forgiven you. Don't do it next time. Then they will start crying. Ah, 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 ah. Next week, they will start sending WhatsApp message to the same gear. They prove that you repented. Is that you will go and meet the person and say, this thing we did is sin, we will not do it again. And then you will go to a spiritual authority that you believe in and account yourself. We have committed this sin, we want the Lord to help us. You will confess that sin. That's a sign. And when you are done, you will delete the lady's number. And you will tell her to delete your number. And you will tell the lady that, if I come close to you, I will destroy your destiny. Don't let me destroy your destiny. And you too, don't destroy mine. You burn the bridge. That's how you repent. You don't cry. Ah, ah. After one week, you now say, Sister, how are you doing? It's been a while. Many times, young people call me and say, Apostle, Apostle, I just really get it. I say, get out. Go and meet your pastor. What do you want me to do? Go and meet your pastor. You know you fornicated. You are running from your pastor because you want him to see that you are a man of prayer. You are hiding iniquity. You are calling me who is far because I don't know you. And you want to go back to it. Is your pastor aware of the condition? You are calling an apostle that is 2,000 kilometers away from you. You are a hypocrite. If you want to repent, delete that person's number, burn that bridge, Cut off that relationship and go and account to your authority. Don't come and talk to a man who doesn't know you. Because this one will not affect your integrity. You can still go to church and act like a spiritual man. Because you know if your pastor knows, he will carry you through a process that will chisel you and stop you never to do it again. That's what you don't want. They say him that covereth iniquity shall not prosper. Repentance is not crying. When you finish crying, wipe your face. And then I will teach you how we, do, how we repent. He said, and after certain days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. Go to the next verse. And as he reasoned with him, see the things this man taught. See the gospel they preached. We come to church, gather 10,000 people. And we are telling them principles of getting wealth. What they can learn in business school. Is the richest preacher. Is the richest man on earth a preacher. That means it's not our job. There's nothing wrong in teaching the covenant of prosperity once in a while. But that is not Jesus Christ. Teach it once in a while. But it shouldn't become the only message of the church. See what Paul, men like Paul taught. He reasoned with him about righteousness, temperance, and the judgment.
men to come. This is the message that a dying world needs about the judgment of the ages to come. There is a throne that no man can run away from. He said, I saw in the heavens a white throne and every man on earth and in heaven appeared before that throne. He said, books were opened and another book was opened, which is the book of life. If your name is not found written in the book of life, you are cast into the lake of fire. And even those who died, he said they didn't escape. He said, hell was commanded to bring forth the souls. And even those that died in the sea, there is a judgment that is to come. When was the last time have we taught the body and the church about the judgments to come? About the ways of righteousness. It's all about money. You will be rich. Next week you will prosper. This week you will. It's nonsense. If this man cannot come under the government of the Holy Spirit. That's why there is lawlessness and iniquity in the sanctuary. They say Paul reason these things with him. When Felix heard it, he became afraid and he said go. But he didn't repent. Because Felix was hoping. If you read the next verse. That Paul will bring bribe. So repentance is not just. Hey I'm convicted of sin. I start crying. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. When you finish there is a responsibility. The responsibility of ending the protocol. That fermented that iniquity. Is the sign that you repented. It's not just conviction. Number two. Repentance is not worldly sorrow. There are two kinds of sorrow. Godly sorrow leads to repentance, but worldly sorrow leads to death. Many people, what they do is worldly sorrow. That's why they cry. They get depressed and they think their depression will provoke repentance. It doesn't. Second Corinthians 7 verse 10. If what is happening to you is godly sorrow, it will lead to a turnaround. But if you cry into depression, that's worldly sorrow. Most times it's even out of pride. Somebody forced and he said, What? Me like this? Is it me like this that fell? Instead of coming to be helped, he will now call you and say, Man of God. Before he starts talking, he says, This thing is not easy. You know, all of us, God is helping us. It's not all of us. <laughs> Put your pride in the pocket, your pride and arrogance, and seek help. They come, they tell you, I made a mistake. You didn't make a mistake, you sinned. You committed iniquity. You went the way of wardom. What is mistake? Did you keep your key where you are not supposed to keep it? You went and stole money from somebody, you say you made a mistake. You went, paid for a hotel, hid behind closed doors, off the light, pulled your clothes. You say you made mistake. What kind of mistake is that? That arrogance alone is why they will never come out of that pit. And then they come, they are crying. They cry is out of their pride. Ha! Is it me like this that fair? Me like this? He say he that standeth should be careful lest he falls. Who told you you are bigger than falling? Everybody standing is helped of God. We are helped. If you are not helped, what will we do? You will be shocked. So repentance is not just earthly sorrow or sorrow out of pride. It is a humble state of brokenness. Like David, I have seen before the Lord. Take not thy spirit from within me. Help me, Father. It's a sorrow that brings you to a point of seeing your insufficiencies and turning to the Lord for mercy. Somebody falls today and he stands up and says, this thing will never happen again. He starts declaring by faith. Instead of coming to God in brokenness, if you have not turned to the Lord, no matter the sorrow you felt, it's not repentance. It's called worldly sorrow. And that kind of sorrow leads to death. Look at what he said. For godly sorrow walketh repentance to salvation. What is godly sorrow? A sorrow that draws you to the Lord to ask for help. Not a sorrow that makes you feel guilty. That sense of guilt that is this me is pride. 
every man who genuinely see, feels godly sorrow runs to the Lord in brokenness. But there are certain men that are, they feel bad. They feel bad. How come? After three days fasting, this kind of thing happened? <laughs> when you fast six days, you will do it two times. He said, but worldly sorrow, he walketh dead. Number three, repentance is not, hear this, I'm showing these things because this is what most of us do. I want to show you the way out. It's a leader's meeting. And I tell you, many pastors are entangled. I talk to a lot of people every day across the nations of the world. I know what I'm telling you. It's not peculiar to Ghana. It's not peculiar to Nigeria. It's peculiar to our generation. Repentance is not a mental accent. I believe that it won't happen again. You are joking. It will happen again when you allow the help of God. In James 2, 18 to 19. In 19 particularly, he said, Thou believest that there is only one God, thou doest well. The devil also believes and trembles. He said, But O vain man, faith without works is dead. When you finish believing, there is a submission to God that you must engage to make it not to happen. It's not just to talk. There are many talkers in our generation. He said, if you declare your faith and there is no corresponding work, he said, that faith is dead. That's why somebody comes today and says, I've repented of lying. But he doesn't come under the government of the Holy Spirit to make for that lie not to happen again. He said, I've repented of immorality, but he doesn't come to the Holy Spirit. He's still walking with every lady, hugging them, snapping with them. Sometimes when you see the places that brothers touch sisters, you now begin to wonder, are these people very afraid? A brother is with a sister, he hugs her. Oh, I miss you. You are hugging a sister for one minute, two minutes. A brotherly hug. You see a brother hold a sister as if they are coming from honeymoon. And that brother is declaring that ah, we like this, we don't fall. We don't know how to fall. You are a faller. <laughs> it's actually your lust that is already driving you. It's not mental action. You don't come to make declarations and talk bogus things. There is a protocol in the spirit. Repentance is not being or acting religious. It's not about religion. Matthew 5.20 These are the things we do that makes us keep falling. See the Pharisees. These ones don't need God at all. They exonerate God completely. When you come to a Pharisee, he gives you laws. Now, see how delicate spiritual things are. If you want to turn to the Lord, the Lord may tell you to fast. And he will deal with something in your life. The Lord may tell you to pray. He will deal with something in your life. But there are certain people that Instead of coming to the Lord to prescribe what to do so that the Lord will be and hover upon that thing to make it fruitful, they will now exonerate God and write out rules and regulations. So when you come to them and you say you are struggling with masturbation, they say, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. You will not see the Holy Spirit, you will not see Jesus, nothing. They give you rules. Those are the Pharisees. That's their righteousness. You will fall a thousand times. Only the Holy Spirit knows the nature of your soul structure. Two people can be fornicating. One person will come to the Holy Ghost and he will say, take a three days dry fast. Another person will come and he will say, go and do thanksgiving. Another person will come, he will say, go and pray for ten hours. As you are doing what you are doing, he will now produce the result. He will animate it. But if you now come and you write rules that if it's fornication, fast for seven days, pray for three hours. When you finish doing it, the first 
time you go out, the first lady you see, you will lost over her. Then you will discover that that labor is in the flesh. Because the Holy Ghost was not the one that powered it. So prayer, fasting, meditation, these are the same routes the Holy Ghost will show you. But it has to be with the Holy Ghost. If it's not with the Holy Ghost, you will labor in the flesh. Everything we do in this kingdom is with God. That's why repentance is to turn to the Lord. The Pharisees knew all the laws, but they couldn't keep them because the laws themselves will become a burden. So repentance is not a religious act. When you come to a place and they say, when you fast, you'll stop fornicating. Go and ask those who have been there for one year. They will tell you that, my brother, I tried it, but sky. In the last one year, I've fallen three times. You will... <laughs> If the Holy Ghost is not the captain of that operation, you will fall. Just give it time. That's the righteousness of the Pharisees. It's a religious kind of righteousness. So repentance is not just conviction without turning to the Lord. Repentance is not a religious rigor. Repentance is not tears that does not translate to turning to the Lord. Repentance is not a mental accent that you just declare that it is well. No. Repentance is all of these things, including God and turning to the Lord so when God convicts you you turn to him when you make that declaration you come under the Holy Spirit to help you when you carry the fasting you come under the Holy Ghost to energize it when you make declaration you come to the Holy Spirit repentance is all of these things that I have outlined with God as part and parcel if God is not the one in it and if God is not the one you are turning to you will fail if you are turning to your declaration you can't fail you can't repent if you turn to your laws, you can't repent. If you turn to all the ordinances, you can't see a result until God initiates it. God is with you and you turn to the Lord. So repentance is conviction that results in turning to the Lord. Repentance is sorrow that results in turning to the Lord. Repentance is a declaration that results in turning to the Lord. Repentance is spiritual ordinances that brings you under the Lord. That is how we get to the verdict of repentance when we are pricked by the lord and we turn to him men and brethren what shall we do to be saved they turn to jesus christ when we decree that we will stand we turn to the lord for help when we decree that we will not fall we turn to the lord for help when we weep we turn to the lord for help when we go to fast we turn to the lord for help never come to a point where you say me i'm a fasting machine many fasting machines are failures God is not raising fasting machines. God is raising men that are seeking him through fasting. Because the goal is not fasting. The goal is seeking the face of the Lord. So if you don't turn to the Lord, you have not repented. And the reason is because if you don't turn to the Lord, you can't receive the power to break that thing that held you in bondage. Because he said they looked up to him and their faces were radiant and they were not ashamed. So the power to break what you are contending with is with the Lord. It's not with fasting. It's not with declaration. It's not with sorrow. It's with the Lord. So if your sorrow makes you turn to God, if your fasting makes you turn to God, then God will break the yoke.